everybody, welcome back. I just want to go over a few last details with you. I realized at the beginning I never really showed you how to save an Illustrator file, but probably if you've been working on this over the course of several days, you've wanted to save your map and then come back to it. Of course, that's not really that hard, and so I hope that really hasn't tripped anybody up, but of course it's just file save. But I do want to point out uh, the different kinds of save options that Illustrator has when you're trying to get ready to produce your final map. If you just hit save, well then you're saving the AI file. A .ai file is the standard Illustrator file type extension, uh, although there are different uh, AI files for different versions of Illustrator and, and hopefully you won't run into compatibility problems, but it is something that you need to be aware of. If you say save as, you have a variety of different options. Uh, an Illustrator EPS file, that's another vector file format. A template file for Illustrator, you could look up how to use templates for Illustrator, which might be very useful if you were trying to develop a series of maps that all conform to one single look and were using a template, that could certainly be there. Uh, you've got SVGs, those are actually the file format that Wikipedia maps prefer and want you to have. So if you're doing anything for Wikipedia, you'd want to investigate the SVG files. And of course, we do have Adobe PDF right here. The PDF is a very common way to save a final copy of a map uh, for printing. It does things like embed all of the different fonts inside. So even if another person does not have a particular font installed on their computer and therefore could not open up the AI file and see it the way that it's supposed to be, they could open up the PDF and see your map exactly how you had designed it. Uh, let me go ahead and export a PDF. I'll go ahead and save a PDF of this map up here to my desktop. I'll use it in just a moment. I'll say save. There are all kinds of options, but I'm just going to say save PDF. I do want to show you what happened. Take a look up here at the top bar. I hope you noticed that up here on the top bar, it used to be an AI file. It used to say example map.ai, and it had the Adobe Illustrator icon. But now, since I said save as a PDF, it now says example map.pdf, and it's got the PDF logo by it. So this is actually a PDF. You can open up a PDF inside Illustrator. You'll have all the different layers. A PDF recognizes layers, so you can see them down still in my layers palette. And you can directly edit a PDF if you happen to feel the need. You could save your map originally as a PDF and then uh, open it up inside Illustrator. I don't really know what type of issues you're going to run into. In a couple of different circumstances when I've been working on different projects, I know that it has been useful to go ahead and save it as a PDF. I've been working on some kind of PDF and I've been able to just directly open up the PDF inside Illustrator and make the adjustments that I needed to make and then just save it and save the PDF again and it would save with those adjustments. I don't know what type of issues you would run into if you were trying to construct an entire project that way. I have never completely constructed a project uh, using uh, just a, a complete PDF. Ordinarily, whenever I'm working on the project, I keep it as an AI file, and then when I am done with it, or when I think I'm done with it and ready to print at least a draft of it, then I go ahead and save it out as a PDF. I'm going to go back to my original AI file. There, see, I'm back to my original AI file. And I just want to point out this other save option if I go down to File. I've got Save as Template, but let me point out Save for Web. In other versions of Illustrator, it will say Save for Web or Device, because it may very well be the case that you are working on a project that is going to go on a website or is going to be part of some app for some device or something like that, and uh, you're told that you need to produce uh, a map that's a very specific pixel size, maybe 600 pixels by 250 pixels or something like that. There's this very specific size that they want the map as an image when it's finally complete to be to include on a website or whatever. So that's what this save for web is for or save for web and device on other versions of Illustrator. Here are all of the options here. There are a lot of them. You could certainly look up a whole bunch of more information on this inside a dedicated Illustrator tutorials, and you can definitely tell right here that I have some stuff that is, it's all white, so you didn't notice earlier, but I have some stuff that's hanging off of the frame that's white, and that would be bad if I were trying to export this exactly from the frame to the frame to the frame. I, I have a problem there. I'd have to go back and fix that. And certainly it would be the case that I would recommend if you're in a situation where you need to design a map 
to a very specific size for the web or for a device and someone gives you the specific pixel sizes that it needs to be that when you create the project at the very first time if you remember going all the way back to the beginning there when you say file new and begin a new illustrator project I would set the size of the artboard to be exactly the size of the final map and then you can notice over here I've got a bunch of different options for naming it of course different kinds of a web safe or device safe rasters now these would be rasters so you wouldn't put the actual vector file into the web you would put a gif or a jpeg or a png up on the web so your original vector drawing inside illustrator would remain as the ai the original file but if you need to go back and adjust you would adjust that but then when you're exporting for the web or for a device you've got uh, the gif the jpeg the png uh, here is the lossy right here. This would give you something about the compression. And if you're trying to do something for the web, and maybe you want uh, different levels of compression to make it load faster. In other situations, as I've been explaining, you do not want that. You can set this, as you can see, as checked right here, clip to artboard. And that's why if somebody tells you that you need to produce something that is a specific size, go ahead and make the artboard that exact size. And that way, if you clip to the artboard, it will enter in the widths and the height and so forth of that exact same size. So you don't have to worry about it. But if I want to make sure that I'm exporting at a specific size, so this is 792 pixels by 612 pixels, uh, if I saved out this GIF, that's exactly how large it would be. This export tool set is very powerful to allow you to save all of the different advantages of your AI file when you're trying to produce your work. But then when, all right, it's got to go up to the web, it's got to be a specific size, use this option to export a raster that is optimized to exactly how your web people or the, the device design people or whoever it is that you're working with want that image. Save it out to them in exactly the format that they want. Print it out, take a look at it, look at it uh, on the device or on the web yourself, make sure that it's how you want it, and then send it on to them. I had mentioned to you that you export maps to PDFs very, very frequently in order to have them printed someplace. Sometimes just to print on your own printer. Sometimes you need to take them down to copy shops with large format printers and so forth. As a side note, I often do take the AI file with me if I'm going down to some kind of copy shop because it's pretty common for them to have Adobe Illustrator. And so if something's going wrong, you've got the original file there. So I typically do put both of those in my flash drive if I'm going down to a copy shop to have it printed. Let me just open up the PDF of this map that I made a moment ago and show you a couple of things about printing. Here I am in Adobe Acrobat, and I brought up the PDF of the map that I created. If you wanted to print this out, or you take this down to the coffee shop to have it printed out, you go up to File Print, of course, but I want to show you a couple of different items. Look right here at Page Scaling. There are all different kinds of options here in Page Scaling, and I believe that the default option typically in Adobe Acrobat is not the option that we want. So you have to be very careful about this when you print it off yourself, and you have to be extra careful about this when you take it to a, a print shop to be printed, if it's a large poster or something. Take a look at all these different page scaling options. We've got None, Fit to Printable Area, Shrink to Printable Area, Tile Large Pages, Tile All Pages, Multiple Pages Per Sheet, and Booklet Printing. And I think that typically, in many cases at least, one of the fit to printable areas or the shrink to printable areas will be the default. And that is not what you want when you print a map. When we set up the artboard originally, we set it all up to be 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper at the artboard, and then we filled out the frame originally. That was the very first thing that we established. And then depending on what kind of printer you've got with the printer driver, that's going to talk to Adobe Acrobat here and say, hey, I can print into this or that. Or And then if you say shrink to printable area, it's going to compress and shrink your map. But I designed this map to be very specifically displayed at 8.5 by 11 with a half an inch margin around the entire map. And I designed my scale to that. And uh, my representative fraction, if, if I had chosen to put it on the map, uh, would be at that. And I don't want to have it all of a sudden shrunk at the last moment with the printing. I do not want that. 
you want to be very sure that you set up your map when you create it in Illustrator exactly the size that you want it and then when this dialog box pops up when you press print inside Acrobat that you do not need any, you shouldn't need any scaling because you know what kind of printer it's going to be on, you've made sure you've compensated for those margins and you've designed your map exactly at the size that you want it so the scale is accurate and so forth. So you want to be sure, you want to be certain that you put page scaling none on there and then press print and when it comes out uh, it'll print exactly at the size that you had. It's not trying to compress it or whatever. So I want to make sure that I'm saying none and when I press print it will print off at exactly this size. Make extra certain that if you take this down to a copy shop like a FedEx office or some kind of shop on campus or if you're working in a department that has a, a, a print shop or something like that, that they understand to make sure this is printed with page scaling none. It's very often the case that people who run these print shops uh, or who run the graphic art sections do not have not had cartographic training. So they don't understand that you can't just take a map that has been designed at a specific size to be printed off at a specific size uh, and you can't just shrink it down or whatever they got to do to have it print off. And especially be certain of that if you're going to pay for it. I highly recommend taking a ruler with you whenever they say, okay, come back in an hour or tomorrow or whenever it is and you'll have your map printed off. Before you accept it, before you pay for it, make certain that it was printed correctly and that your scale and so forth is accurate. Make certain of that and if it's not, please do not pay for it. Take a ruler with you before you accept and pay for the map uh, and you can check different aspects of the distances between objects on the map. Uh, in this case it would be very very easy for me to check the scale down there. So I would know that on my map each one of those bars should be exactly a half of an inch, those large bars anyway. Pull out your ruler in front of them, measure it, make sure that it is correct, and if it's not, do not pay for the map. Have them print it again. So please remember that uh, when you're printing PDFs or having somebody else print a PDF of a map for you.